Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, retired meteorologist with this Tropical Storm Ian update for Thursday, September 29th. Ian passed over the central portion of the peninsula of Florida overnight and now this afternoon has emerged off the coast around Cape Canaveral as a tropical storm with 70 mile per hour winds. The storm has been moving a bit faster than anticipated and more eastward in its path. It appears as of this Thursday afternoon that the bulk of Ian's winds and rain will remain east of the Georgia coast. However, with the storm moving further eastward, it will be able to tap into the warm waters of the Gulf Stream and then re-strengthen into a minimal hurricane and then move toward the coast of South Carolina. Even with all that, a hurricane watch remains in effect across the coastal waters in coastal areas of Georgia along with a tropical storm warning and a hurricane warning has been issued for the coast of South Carolina. Let's take a look. Here I am with my website savannapat.name and from there just go straight to the first graphic the hurricane Ian information now tropical storm but soon to be hurricane again and click on that and it takes you directly to the National Hurricane Center and looking at the forecast uh, from the National Hurricane Center shows that the storm will be moving well east of the Georgia coast but as it goes uh, over the Gulf Stream it will pick up some of the energy from the warm waters out there and could re-intensify and most likely will re-intensify into a minimal hurricane, a category one hurricane with about 75 mile per hour winds and then progress northward toward the upper coast uh, uh, into the middle coast of South Carolina somewhere in and around the Charleston area where a hurricane warning is in effect there. Hurricane watch remains in effect for the uh, coastal Georgia and the north portions of the Florida coast for the remainder of the afternoon and for tomorrow for the Georgia coast. Now let's take a look at the satellite imagery and uh, the storm is nowhere near defined as it was yesterday when it went over the peninsula of Florida last night it really weakened considerably actually it was down to a tropical storm of 65 miles per hour when it uh, exited the coast at Cape Canaveral area and now it's about 70 miles per hour at the moment and there's not much associated with this uh, other than some wind and some rain uh, not much uh, lightning associated with this uh, which is good. So most of this is just rain and wind and most of the lightning is well out to sea east of the Gulf Stream. Now looking at the um, conditions once again with the on Savannah Pat.name my website I have two radar sites here one the greater uh, Savannah Hilton Head radar site coming out of the uh, uh, Jasper County area around uh, Ridgeland at Grays is the location of the radar and it shows considerable amount of rain off the coast well out in the sea and rain falling in and around the Brunswick area now creeping its way upward into Liberty County coastal Liberty counties still some very strong winds are being measured over on the McKinnon Airport uh, over on St. Simons Island they've been gusting between 40 and 50 miles per hour throughout the uh, morning and early afternoon hours and they're uh, 50 uh, mile per hour wind, 45 mile per hour wind being measured there right now. And you can watch the winds on the radar site throughout the afternoon and tonight and for tomorrow. Now if we go further uh, south or further down on the website uh, to the floating radar which I have now on the Jacksonville radar site and it shows you the the storm itself. Uh, hard to pick up the eye itself on the radar. Uh, it's right about here right now and uh, most of the rain is out to sea and that's going to remain mostly out to sea across Georgia but when it gets further north in towards South Carolina that'll be a different story altogether. And looking at the computer models from this afternoon this is the what's called the morning run which is available early in the afternoon uh, shows the storm uh, right there off the coast of Cape Canaveral Florida uh, south southeast of the Jacksonville area and well south of Savannah now southeast of Savannah as it as we go through time you can see the storm moving northward staying well to the east of the Georgia coast that's some good news for us not so good for South Carolina as we progress further in time you can see the storm moving on shore just north of the Charleston area according to the uh, uh, global forecast system model let's take a look at the RGEM model which I like a lot 
it's a little bit higher resolution model here and it shows the storm and the winds here and this goes up uh, every one hour in time increment and here we have it at 12 Zulu Friday morning or that's 8 o'clock Friday morning and let's call that sunrise and there it will be almost due east of uh, Tybee Island and due south of Charleston and all the heavy winds remain out to sea but there will be some strong gusts along the coastal areas now progressing further in time uh, we go into the uh, uh, two o'clock tomorrow afternoon and it has it moving on shore just north of Charleston South Carolina but what about rainfall uh, looking at the uh, rainfall potential again good news for the Georgia area so, uh, most of the rain is going to remain out to sea uh, there will be some lighter rains moving up in the upper portions of southeastern Georgia around the central Savannah River area but as you get into South Carolina that's where the bulk of the rain is going to be now and uh, uh, it looks like about uh, three to five inches of rain across a large portion of central and northeastern South Carolina with some very heavy rains uh, from around Collington County northward into the Charleston area and Berkeley County and so forth moving up toward Myrtle Beach South Carolina uh, there you can see gosh the computer models are saying up to 10 inches but lately the computer models have been overreacting a little bit particularly across the Georgia area as we know uh, not much anticipated from what we saw uh, forecast earlier in the week looking at the tide data the tide maxed out this morning at about 9.5 feet that was about a foot and a half higher a little bit more than a foot and a half higher than the predicted value of eight feet um, during this high tide cycle we should have another high tide tonight and but tomorrow morning's high tide the uh, looking at the the wind model here uh, tomorrow morning's high tide will be at noon so it'll be about right here uh, that's right there uh, shows the winds will be from the northwest so that'll be blowing the tide back out to sea so that's another good thing we won't have to worry about a flooding tide tomorrow just perhaps a uh, some, some flooding tonight at the high tide which will be around midnight with the storm passing more east of the Georgia coast the bulk of the heavy rains will miss most of Georgia except the possibility of about an inch or so in coastal Georgia but heavier amounts will fall in the southern and eastern portions of lower South Carolina with one to three inches in the Buford County area and greater amounts further north toward Charleston and northeast South Carolina. Uh, it will be windy today, tonight and tomorrow, particularly in the coastal counties, but not as bad as it was feared earlier in the week. However, winds of tropical storm strength, those of 39 miles per hour or greater, will continue along the coastal counties with higher velocities of around 50, perhaps 60 miles per hour along the beaches and near hurricane strength of 74 miles per hour well out to sea. This will generate high seas of 10 to 15 feet and strong onshore breakers resulting in considerable beach erosion. The greatest threat time for the greater Savannah, Hilton Head, Buford areas will be tonight through Friday afternoon with those strong winds. Areas west of Interstate 95 in Georgia will have some winds, but should remain below 30 miles per hour. Not expecting any damage there at all. Inland South Carolina, however, could see considerable higher winds and more rains, and we could see tree damage there. The tide will remain elevated with tidal departure of about one to three feet during this evening's high tide cycle around midnight, with top values around 10 to 11 feet. Flooding begins at around 9.5 feet. However, tomorrow the winds will be blowing out to sea, which will keep the tide well below flood levels. I will continue to monitor this storm and advise you to do the same. But right now, things are looking much, much better, particularly for the Georgia counties. You can find me on my website of Savannah Pat Name. I update that daily, sometimes two or three times a day when needed or on my Weather and Nature Facebook page and on Twitter at Pat of Savannah. And of course, my YouTube channel where you're watching right now on my Weather and Nature channel as Patrick Prokop. And when the storm passes, please join me on my main YouTube channel, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I have links to all of these in the description section below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and see you later.